So I'm going to show you a few of the plants um, up here on the prairie. It's a buckwheat. Uh, it's not like the buckwheat, the uh, a grass buckwheat, but it's a annual forb. Um, uh, as you can see, it, it forms this really nice pink coat uh, over the ground. It flowers later in the year, so it adds some uh, late season color. Um, it is uh, state listed as rare uh, because it is limited to only serpentine soils and uh, to uh, this county as well as Marin. Uh, now we can move on to uh, something a little more common. Um, and you'll see it in here as you, especially as you pan across the area, this is uh, uh, our state grass, which is purple needle grass. So um, it's intertwined with a bunch of other things here, but you can see the leftover seed heads here, a uh, little bit more here. It's a perennial grass. Um, and purple needle grass was once thought to be the dominant uh, uh, species in California grasslands where it covered a lot of California. Uh, these bunches, if you will, um, will grow to be upwards of uh, 20, 30 years old. And um, uh, really important uh, grass. Now these are all done, the seeds have all fallen. Next, I want to show off the state rock. Um, serpentinite, or some people just call it serpentine. Uh, serpentinite is, um, is an old relic from seabeds. Um, it comes from ocean beds that are pushed underneath and then eventually pushed up through the surface. So uh, it's a highly pressurized uh, formation for this rock and oftentimes serpentine will have this wonderful sheen on it. If you catch the sun just in the right way, you'll see it, it uh, have a very glossy effect to it. Uh, serpentinite is interesting because it has um, very high levels of magnesium, um, very low levels of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and calcium, which are typically required for plant growth. Therefore, this plant, uh, this, <laughs> this rock, allows us to, um, allows for very unique plant communities to form. Uh, it, produces what we call adaphic communities or plant communities that only reside on this type of soil. Um, all right, so moving downhill, we can take a quick peek at our state flower here. Uh, so we've seen our state grass and our state rock so far. This is our state flower, the California poppy. Uh, you can see it finishing up um, uh, at, for the day. Um, as they, the petals tend to roll together. Um, and also, uh, it's kind of a treat, but we'll see the seed pods that are here. Um, and one of the neatest aspects of uh, California poppies is that when the seeds are mature, their pods will pop open. <laughs> That's the name, the poppy. I don't see any mature enough now that if we just squeeze it, it'll pop open. But here you can see an old pod that's split in half and they become very hard and dry up very quickly. They open up and they literally project seeds everywhere. So you'll see these little uh, orange flowers dotting the hillside and that's a California poppy. So here it is up close. Um, and here you can see the petals are, are rolled. Um, the California poppy IDs very quickly from other poppies because underneath it has this thing called a torus. So it has this really nice ring, um, and most poppies don't have that ring, but the California poppy is known for having that ring or collar. And then very paper-like soft petals. Um, all right, so next, if we're lucky here, we're gonna get a little peek at uh, uh, Presidio clarkia, which is a federally endangered plant. This is kind of an atypical form for it. Typically, uh, Clarkias are just uh, a single branch like this, but it looks like something nibbled away at this one or it had a little insect um, bite into it, and so it has much more branching. But uh, Clarkias are these beautiful uh, purplish colors uh, near the base of the 
petals, you'll see a little bit of red in there, um, and then a, the purple fades to white before it goes to red. These are the seed pods here, um, uh, the seed capsules rather, and within each capsule you find many, many seeds. This, similar to a poppy, uh, dries up and busts open and then the seeds come out. Um, and this is uh, this plant is federally endangered because it's restricted to uh, this area in the Oakland Hills and the Presidio of San Francisco. So we're fortunate to have this plant and uh, we're doing research on trying to improve its habitat. Um, and what else could I show you? Here is a uh, tar plant. So this is in the aster family, so also uh, this is closely related to sunflowers. Um, and they're closing up for the day too, sadly. But if you were to open it up, you would find the little sunflowers and the rays. Um, and the unique thing about this plant is that it loves to come up this time of year. Um, it's a late season annual. Um, so it goes through the cycle every year and it has this wonderful fragrance. So when you look at this under a microscope or a hand lens, you'll find little glands of oil all over it. And those little glands uh, basically um, keep it from being munched or eaten by herbivores that are hungry. Um, and they also give off this really wonderful sweet smell um, and they're very sticky. So um, yeah.